do a quick video. It's home alone, so I figured I'd take the bike out. I haven't taken this out really well. I've been taking it to the dealer to go get parts, but took a ride around local. But I've never uh, updated anybody about the Hillert clutch. So it seemed like it was, uh, I don't know, grabbing or something like. Like the chain was messed up or something. The chain seems fine. It's a little loose though, but that's all right. I think I was, I was climbing hills and shit like that, like a dick. And I'm 200 pounds. I think this was just getting hot. But, uh... Looking pretty damn good though. It's nice. <laughs> some light on there bushing looks okay That's quite a lip in the bell housing if I can take this off completely nah, I gotta pop the chain off well I'm gonna pop it off and clean it up a little bit I think that's from climbing hills and shit I was looking for spots to go magnet fishing. But, uh, you can see the bell housing's a little, a little messed up. Some grooves in it and some marks and whatnot. And I think I just heated it up too much climbing them hills and shit. But, uh, it's been holding up great. Other than that, like I said, it was acting funny. So, uh, figured I'd come back and check it out. On a side note, also, I forgot to mention that I also went with a Hillard clutch on the drag bike. I want it just because I want to check it out. I want to try it. And it's an $85 unit. It's a Hillard Extreme Racing, I believe it was called. Uh, the box is inside uh, I'll be back in a second I am going to go get alright so went back in the house this is the clutch I'm using on the drag bike figured I'd give it a shot comes with them springs I believe they stall at 2800 and the springs that are on it now or stall at 3000 I believe it is and got a removable uh, sprocket on it you can change the sprocket out doesn't look that much different than the other one other than removable sprocket and stuff like that but uh we'll put that one to the torture test also so far I'm liking these but I think I almost killed this one trying to climb hills and shit let's see I can find this dam where the hell's the damn thing at master there it is Oop. not paying attention what I'm doing Losing screws. Lost one. Great. Let me uh, find this screw and get this chain off. Alright, so found all the screws. Got the chain off. Chain's in pretty good condition. There's no... I mean, it's stretched, but there's no bad spots on it. I'm going to keep using it. I want to see how long that lasts. This is, this is an Amazon brand. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but I like this stuff. I have a 50 foot roll of 35 I got off of Amazon. That shit is junk. It just seems like some lengths, some areas were bad, and then some were great. But uh, who knows? Let's see if I can get this bushing out. Now oh, it's clipped in. Yeah, I gotta get this bushing out. 
I want to lube that, clean that up, get that crap out of there. You yeah, actually the racing clutch. Also, I should have did a video putting that together. It has a cover that goes a cover that goes on the inside. So when you grease it, the grease won't make its way to the bell housing. So when I originally put this on, I'm riding through uh, South Philly, making my way up to Northeast Philly, and it starts slipping. I'm like, what the hell? I thought it was breaking, but I'm like, oh damn, looking at it. The grease all coming out of it. I was like, well, that's my dumbass fault. Bike going by. I over greased it. But yeah, I am happy with this. That's crazy that that did that. I mean, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. But. What the hell was that? I wonder what that, uh, you know what? That was my binding right there. Like the chain was flopping and grabbing that. Ugh. Yeah, that's probably what it was. This is probably, it was shaking a little bit and that chain was grabbing the edge of that. Grabbing the edge of this uh, bell housing. That probably because that train stretched too much. And I don't think I got enough. I don't definitely don't have enough on that. And I really don't have enough on the engine. I could pull it a a forward a little bit. And that's about it. Not much. But yeah, these Hillard clutches are really nice. And I mean, I got a lot of miles on this thing. I mean, it's just not like I drive this thing everywhere. Uh, I go from Southwest Philly to Northeast. I don't remember how many trips I took. At least three, two or three on this clutch, maybe. That's a lot of miles on this. Um, just because I'm taking the streets is probably a hundred mile trip back and forth. So, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I'm just not farting around the neighborhood. I go everywhere. And the, the clutch shoes look great. That's great. I'm happy with that. The bell housing is a little funny. But that's probably my fault for trying to climb a damn hill. It's like 90 degrees out here. It's hot as shit. And I'm climbing dirt hills looking for places to go magnet fishing. So, I'm going to get that cleaned up and get that lubed up. Probably try to get some slack out of it. And we'll be right back. Alright, so, it's all back together. Loose the motor up. Moved it forward more. See, it'll get the tighten up a little bit. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Bar and chain oil. That's what I use on my chains. Because why not? It's good enough for a chainsaw, it's good enough for a mini bike. Took this all apart, cleaned it up, scuffed it real quick with a piece of 100 grit sandpaper because that's what I had. Let's get some of them hills and valleys out of there. Just a real quick note, don't, I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to shave the damn thing down. The bushing inside looked good. Cleaned that up. Uh, greased it. Not too much. So you don't get it all over the damn clutch shoes and start slipping again. But yeah. And so I put it, get them bottles at the dollar store. Just put my bar and chain oil in there. And I got another one just for motor oil for a engine assembly. This is also, I wanted to show everybody. It's my CT100U. Got this a year ago. Had a 196 on it. Killed it somewhat I don't know I modified the engine I changed the head and I put a cam in it and that carburetor and this thing actually I put three different carburetors on it I put that on it I had a PWK 21 millimeter uh, stock carburetor and for some reason the motor did nothing but run rich 
even when I put the stock carburetor back on, I had to put a stock jet in it for it to run decent. I don't know if I was just losing compression past the rings. I don't know. I was like, you know what? I don't know how old the block is. And I was like, fuck it. I was going to build a 212. And the 224 was on sale. So I was like, well, the flywheel will work. Let me go get a 224. So I got this motor, took it home, pulled it apart, put the Tillotson head on it that I bought for the 196. I poured it and polished that one. It's got gauge roller rockers in it, um, billet flywheel, billet rod, uh, flat top piston, all that crap. The only thing I used out of this motor was the fucking crank and the block. Everything else at the market. I even just, I changed this two weeks ago. Put the smaller starter cup on because the starter cup on these and the, the shroud, they're all wider. I had to change it out because the nut came loose, busted up the starter cup, busted up the pull start. So I had all this laying around from my old, this is off of a, the 196 put all that on so it don't actually look like a 224 but it is um this is my street cruiser i take this thing everywhere and by the time i get home on my trips this is pretty much full because there's no baffling in the i took the baffle out of the uh, valve cover so the rockers are clear i got gauge ultralight one threes in there I got this exhaust off I think eBay. I like it. Sounds decent. I got a 68 tooth rear sprocket on it. I think I can do 53 with me on this. But it's only got one of them cheap carbs on it. They work good though. And a mod 2 cam. I have a Stutz Racing. 252 rattlesnake I'm going to put in and I got a 24 millimeter Makuni finally uh, it's all just sitting around I haven't did anything so my anxiety has been out of fucking control and yeah I love this little thing I got a uh, long tractor tires on it the only thing I don't like about this bike I'm short, so I'm good. I'm 5'5". Five five. It's good enough for me, really. Not very comfortable, but good enough. It doesn't handle very well with the short wheelbase. This is what I'm guessing. Because, like, if I ride a Motovox or Monster Moto, I could fly around a turn no problem. This thing is swirly, but mm, I don't care. It is what it is. I still have fun on it. So that was just a quick update on the Hillert Clutch and my CT100U and that'll be all thanks for watching